my my plan wasn't for comedy. My plan was to get to David for my music. Wow, that was the plan. So maybe one day, like I was randomly thinking that maybe one day, David will just say, "Ah, this guy, come, come, come." And like I don't bless you, back. Yeah, maybe not even vast. Maybe he could just ask to see me, then I'll play my music. That was how it was in my head. Wow. People ask me where I get all my energy from, from the stage to the studio and to my desk. I am the energy god, and you can be one too. You're listening to Adi Shokwe Live, the Afrobeat podcast. Right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to another edition of Adi Shopper Live, the official Afrobeats podcast here in the Afri Media Studios in London, where we have the hot topics of the culture or sometimes have a one on one with my special guests from anywhere in the world. As always, this is brought to you by the Energy God Energy Drink. Drink and be yourself, stay energized. Make sure you go to energygod.com for more information. And as always, we'd like to say thank you for the subscriptions, the likes, the comments, the sharing of our content. It means so much to us. Every single subscription is important to our platform because the bigger our platforms get, it's easier for us to promote our own people without having to rely on others to do the promotion for us. So keep the subscriptions going. Now back to the studio. I'm joined by a superstar out of Nigeria. This brother has definitely turned up the internet. One of the creators, the creatives that's making incredible entertainment content from Nigeria. Not only an actor, you know, a writer, now showcasing his original talent as a musician. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Nas Boy. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> My brother. Energy guy. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. The, the, the first time I came in contact with you was the content that you were making as David O. Yeah, yeah. First of all, how do you even introduce yourself? If you say, you know, you're nice boy, you are. How would you introduce yourself to people that don't know who you are or don't know <laughs> what you do? What, what do you say? Um, my name is Nas Boy. Mm. Just in case you don't know me, <laughs> I'm a content creator. I'm a comedian. I'm a musician. Mm. I used to be a photographer. Wow! I'm an actor. Plenty, plenty things. Plenty, That's plenty incredible, things. man. You mentioned uh, you used to be a photographer. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that career. Uh, oh, so photography was just passion. It was something that I really wanted to do. Mm. Then along the line, um, I was making music. I got really frustrated and. Uh, no heads with. Mm. So I decided to do something in entertainment, something that I can still be around the business. So I decided to do photography, something I had passion for. Mm. So I did photography for one year. I studied photography. Wow. For like one year, then I made some money off it. Then uh, I was using it to survive. Then I started making funny videos. Sometime in 2020, that's when I started making funny videos. No way. So randomly, I didn't, I didn't, the plan is, I didn't make funny videos because I wanted to make funny videos. I was sitting in a car with my friend. And he said, um, ah, bro, oh, so he said, um, why not make funny videos? You're actually a funny guy in person. Like, whenever we chit chat, you're always making us laugh. Make funny videos now. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm too shy to make funny videos because I used to be very shy. So we we're just in the car and um, I started um, I started making, I started, uh, I started to talk like David. Wow. Randomly, no intentions. Like, I was just mimicking David. I think it was about Grammy. Bonaboy, Grammy, mm. Angelic Kijo some mm. time ago. So I was mimicking David and my guy was like, ah, bro, this thing sounds like David. Though. I'm like, really? He said, eh, no. So before then, I used to catch crews. I'll just put something on my Instagram, 13 comments, 18 comments, 12 comments. On, not until I made the David video and mimic video, then I posted. I was, sit I was seated in a car, then I made the video randomly. Then I posted. I had like 100 comments. That's way over what mm. I, I usually have. So I'm like, ah. Well, this this if like this that thing, was an indication for if like this thing, that thing, you know. So me, my my plan wasn't for comedy. My plan was to get to David for my music. Wow, that was the plan. So maybe one day, like I was randomly thinking that maybe one day, David will just say, ah, this guy, come come come. And like I don't bless you back. Yeah, maybe not even vast. Maybe he could just ask to see me, then I'll play my music. Hmm. That was how it was in my head. Wow, until I started getting attention. It became comedy. <laughs> so everybody started looking at, you know, in the internet space, the moment you blow up, it has to be comedy. Yeah. So lucky me, I knew how to act back in school. I had like, I watched a lot of Nollywood movies. So I was able to use it. So you context. never studied drama or anything? No, nah, mechanical engineering. 
God damn it. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about that. What yeah. uni did you go to? University of Uyu. Wow. Mechanical engineer. Mm-hmm. So your acting skills is purely off of what you watched on TV. Trust me. Trust me. Wow. Wow. Talk to me about now adding these acting skills to, of course, the content creator. Because mm-hmm. you just randomly did a video mm. that obviously went viral, caught attention, and then you decided to now lean into this as some sort of a career yeah. without information and knowledge. How was that like? What w- were you starting to learn along the line? What things did you have to do to set it up as a business? So it wasn't easy at first because it was overwhelming. Hmm. I can't lie. But from the very beginning, I really wanted to be an entertainer. I liked, I, I, I liked the whole idea of entertainment and I wanted to be there. Mechanical engineering for me was <laughs> something I wasn't going to use. So I just wanted it to be entertainment, music. But then my friend kept saying, yo, bro, We've done music for too long. My best friend was a producer. Right. How long did you, did you I started, try? I started, I started recording in 2006. That's when I started recording. God damn it. Yeah. I started recording in 2006. 27, 28, 29, 210, 211, 212. I was still recording. 214, that's, that was my final year in the university. So two, um, 215, um, 214. I did a song. I posted randomly on Twitter. Then Omotola Jaladia came in. The actress, she heard it and she's like, she's about to start a record label, come over to Lagos. I wasn't in Lagos then. She said, come over to Lagos. Then she started a record label with me and some other guy. His name is Vechi. So that's how I got signed for three years. But Things just didn't uh, work out. Yeah, it didn't really work out. I got depressed. Hmm. Very. So I, I decided to I decided to serve. I decided to serve in 2017. I, I wanted to be busy for one year. So I decided to serve. In 2018, that's when I started photography. To nineteen, while she were in Lagos. No, I wasn't in Lagos. So you were shuttling between. Yeah. Where exactly is home for you? Portacot. Wow. Yeah, PH City. Acquire bomb, then school acquire bomb, then um, Lagos. I was coming to Lagos. I started coming to Lagos from two thousand and six. I was quite very young. Then I used to go to Alaba Market. I was, wow. I was really determined. Like I used to go to Alaba Market when I was a kid. By yourself. Mm-hmm. All by myself. What inspired what what was what inspired you to want to get into music that time? Because you're talking 2006. Mm. That's Timaya. Mm-hmm. That's Don Kamasi. That was that was that was even before Timaya. Honestly, that was before Timaya because I could remember that I was doing music already when I bought Timaya's CD. Mm. I could remember vividly Danko music. Yeah, I could remember that I bought his CD, but I was a musician already. I could also remember Duncan's first album. I was a musician already. I was already singing and recording. You were already... Mm. Sing- so who inspired you? I, I sincerely I sincerely can't place it. I'm, I'm being honest. I, I, I don't know what inspired music. I really don't know what inspired music. But then I started recording when I was young. But I could remember that I used to be super crazy about Two-Face and Plantation Boys. A lot of us were. Yeah. Like, pla- plant- okay, but so the thing is, I used to be a very big fan of Blackface. Mm. Like I used to be a big fan of Blackface, Plantation Boys. Like, so no yeah. way. <laughs> so now you've come to Lagos, you've you've gone through education. Now, whilst you were doing the music and in university and decided to come to Lagos to potentially join an Omotala Jala Day's uh record label, mm. what was the family saying? What what was your family saying? What's the background like? Talk to me about that conversation, like ah, oh, you know, your parents, your your siblings, what was everybody thinking? So the funny thing is, I'm actually the first child of my parents, yeah, and uh, my mom supported me from like way back. My both parents. I had a studio when I um, when I was, I can't I can't remember the age, but that was 2008. My mother wow. opened the studio for me, a oh, complete wait. studio in my estate. So I was this popular kid around. That Everybody had knew that. Studio. Yeah, now Wonder Banting used to be my like your boy. Like yeah, so we grew up together. We grew up together. Yeah, I'm older actually, but we grew up together. Then I used to be like the hot kid around the estate, around the vicinity. Mm. Yeah. So it's it's a journey. It's a journey for real. And when you went to Lagos and this didn't work out, you know, um, you had been recording since 2006. You eventually came to Lagos 2014 or 15. Mm. And the music thing just didn't work out. What was going through your mind? How were you <sighs> dealing with all of that? So honestly, yeah, I, I didn't know I was going to survive. Like, I, I, I gave up on entertainment. I just wanted to feed at some point. I mm. just wanted to do photography. I just wanted I, I just wanted to live by the day. Do photography, 
make some money, eat, and be okay. I, I gave up on music, sort of. Yeah, because I did it for a long time. It's enough for me to give up. So I just wanted to survive at that point until the internet showed, <laughs> showed love. Yeah, showed love. <laughs> Talk to me about how life changed from the skate videos that you've started creating and how where you started to see a little money here, a little more, and how it ultimately became a business that now you're flying business class to the UK. You get me? The money is long now. Uh, no, no, it's never long. <laughs> Energy God, you're not going to spoil my name. <laughs> the money is never long. <laughs> so, funny thing is, it's way better than before, actually. Mm. You know when I started off, with the whole David O. Mimicking yes. character. I, I, did, I, I didn't even do too much of the character. I didn't do too much. So I, I, I was intentional about everything. Everything. I, I knew that Nigerians were going to be tired. I was scared that yeah, maybe a lot of people. Be, I could like, remember. I was. I actually. Yeah, was. yeah. A lot of people reached out. I could remember seeing Jimmy Jat, and Jimmy Jat was like, "Yo." Because I was just thinking. No, I was just scared that it was going to box you, and, and that, you that would, would have it. nowhere to go. Yeah, exactly. So I had to run. So I, I sat I sat in my bed and I calculated. I knew that they were going to get tired. Hmm. So I was I was super lucky that I had a lot to offer to. So and I did it quickly. You know, if I didn't do it quickly, a lot of people for they say maybe yeah. if I only tried to do the other characters, people would be like, "What's oh, this one?" It'd be too late. Yes. Yeah. So It'd I was quick. Late. I didn't make too much videos with the the video thing. Yeah. I didn't make maybe more three than three or something. No, it's a total of like six, seven. Exactly. And that was it. Yeah. 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 That was it. Wow. So. Until now, people still say, give us the character and we miss it. Once in a while. It. Yeah, You're no. supposed to drop once in a while. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm over it. Just the <laughs> Yeah, I can remember, I, I can remember like, um, it's not the last time I saw David. Some time ago, David was like, you know they drop money now? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know they do me again? I mean, <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> so you don't drop money? You'll be very big, you know they do me again? <laughs> Uh, no, but the right. truth is, man had to evolve. Mm. Man had to evolve. Talk to me about how, you know, when you first saw money from this content creation, mm. how that felt. And what, what, what was that moment that something came in based off of what you've done? You, let me just, let me sum it up. Mm. You, understand? you know, if Arsenal win Premier League, <laughs> you know the way we'll go happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know the way we go happy yeah. passing our win Premier yeah, League. Yeah, Are you yeah. feeling me that? You understand? I was super excited because I lost hope. I'm not going to lie. I lost hope because at some point I knew that I wasn't going to work with my certificate. But at some point I started looking at the certificate again. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, should I say you're not going to help me? <laughs> <laughs> I won't die. You. <laughs> so I knew that. I, I knew that. I never knew. I gave up. Hmm. I gave up. Early 2014, 15, 16, I used to make amazing music like when I was young. You know how this thing is now. Around that vicinity, I was the only Yoruba kid around mm. in my estate in Portacourt. So I used to be really spectacular. I go to shows to perform. People are always shouting, "Ass boy!" I was a very popular kid in school. Very popular in school. I was like the number one kid in my school. So it, it was a headway. Then a motola came. You mm. uh -uh. like get the way the thing they set. They set like say, "Now my, now my destiny with this." Yeah, but on the longer run, I can't understand. Say sometimes maybe waiting you want for yourself, God want for you. Mm. You understand? But we are back. We are back to making music now. Absolutely. And um, the one I dropped recently is just is the list of the songs I've recorded. So, that's amazing. The yeah, funny yeah. thing is, when that record dropped, that's when I DM'd you. Yeah. Because that's a dope record. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people were surprised. That was a dope. Like, I really liked it. That's why I DM'd. That's why I posted it. Like, nah. I messed with Because once I saw the song, as a fan and a critic, I wanted to hear, like... Within this one, one Within the Apple for a year. And I just clicked <laughs> the, you know, the speaker sound and I heard the record and I'm like, no, th there's definitely something here. And then after I had posted and, and tagged you to say, just keep doing it, you know, because I liked it. Mm -hmm. I now saw Joey Akan fighting off criticism on your behalf mm -hmm. on social media mm -hmm. saying, nah, I yes, actually please. met this guy mm -hmm. as... A musician, mm. not a content creator, that he packed music aside for whatever he's doing, but this guy is genuinely talented. Who are some of the people you met along the, the line then when you were trying to make music that you probably now started coming across mm. since things changed? Uh, no, no, no. It's where OGs were, mm. like OGs. I could remember that I met Sam Sultan once. I can never forget going to his house. I can never forget because Omotala sent me to his house to stay with him for a day. 
So I was literally just to learn. Him. Yeah, so he taught me a lot of things, like a whole lot of things. I was with him for a day. So I remember I, I met Sam Sultan. He was a big brother. We met severally. Wow. And uh, then when he even saw that I was, the, he didn't know that I was the guy that was making videos. Because yeah. we saw Josh twice. Then he didn't know I was that guy. Until we saw again at the video shoot. And I said, ah, big bro, it's me. He said, you who? Me, that guy. He was like, no way. What? You? I said, it's me. So he was super proud of me, gave me his blessings, and um, a few other persons, a few other persons. What, what, what's the, so what's this content creator industry like? You know, we know what the music industry is like. Mm. You know, there's been a lot of collaborations. There's been a lot of successes from that. It looks like in the content creator world now, mm. there is a lot of collaborations happening, mm -hmm. and you guys are now starting to move as a force. Have you guys realized that... It is an industry that you guys have to really start to put structures together to, to make it easier for young up and coming people like yourselves or what is the, the industry like and how do you feel about what's happening to it? The industry is huge. Like it shouldn't be underrated. Facts. <laughs> Everybody can see it. Now. Facts. So um, we, uh, the last time I spoke to one of my older colleagues, Chris Clown, shout out to Chris Clown. Yeah. Um, he actually said, we are going to be having an association. Facts. Yeah, so... That's, that's coming. It's coming mm. on the line. We are going to be having a proper association. Yeah. And um, a lot's been happening. A lot of us now do movies too. Yeah. A lot of us now do movies too. So the space is actually getting bigger. Well, be because you guys are making so much money with content mm. creation, what is it like inviting you into movies? Can they match those type of purses? I or cannot you're just lie. Doing... I cannot lie. Every time I do a movie, I don't do a movie for the money. Mm. Because it doesn't match. It doesn't match anything. So I just do it for the fact that, oh, it's not a bad idea to be here. Yep. You understand? I know they have they have an audience too. Fact. So it's not even a bad idea to be in their faces. So, but movies don't pay as compared to what we do. Yeah. Nothing compared to what we do. So if you ever see us doing it, just know that we are doing it for passion. Absolutely. It's passion. Yeah. So, you know, in movies, yeah, I could, I could do like, I could do like one, two, three, four, five days, six days. The last movie I did, I did for like 10 days. You understand? 10 days out of my creative spaces, a wow. lot. A whole lot. I can make a lot of money then. I can relax. I can think. But if you take 10 days away for nothing, because it's actually for nothing, trust me. Because you're just waiting. Yeah. For I know how much I got, so it's for nothing. Wow. Mm. Talk to me about even the ideas. Do you work with people? Do you have writers? Or all of these ideas are stuff that's just coming from this, your Afro pops. <sighs> so, at so many points, I wish I had a writer. Mm. I saw so many points. I wish I had a writer. But I do everything on my own. Everything on my own. Everything. It's not easy. Oh. It's not like it's... Uh, yeah. it's, it, it's not so easy. Right? I, I wish to have a writer. I wish... But I feel like my stuffs are so unique that I am waiting for that unique writer that can come and match up with what I do. You understand? I've seen people... People send me scripts, but they don't really match up with what I do. It's not like... I know that there are people out there that are better than me. Absolutely. I am waiting to see that person. Like that I'm, can help. That please, can just come yeah, and join. Right, uh, reach out. <laughs> <laughs> so, do reach you out, have your out. own camera crew? Do you have your own? I have my crew. I have, I have my guy who shoots for me. I direct my stuffs. I have my guy who shoots for me. He does the editing. He brings life into everything I do. Do you have a schedule? Like, all right, we're recording three or four contents this week. No, or, or, I don't. Or I it don't. just comes up. If it comes, possibly. If I'm going home now and I get, I luckily get content now. I'll plan for it and shoot tomorrow, if I have. Wow. If I have the content, so I don't have schedule. So I I think that's where the writer comes in. So if the if you have like a proper team, you have a writer, yeah. And you guys know that you have four scripts. Okay, we are doing four tomorrow. Absolutely. But me, I don't have. So <laughs> I sincerely don't have. Yes. As it comes. As it comes, you're still talking it out. Yeah, as it comes. So now that comedy and and content creation has now become a thing for you that has put the spotlight on you, put a lot of money in your pocket. How, what's, how's the family reacting to this? And, and does it give you a little bit of fulfillment that even though music didn't work at the beginning, mm. at least now we're getting some kind of recognition mm. within the entertainment space. I feel super excited. I feel, so, I can end here. Mm. Like what I mean is, even if I don't get to do music at the end of the day, then it's fine. But doing? then I feel like, I won't be, I am not going to do myself good. justice. Yeah, I'm not going to do myself justice. I feel like I need to be heard. Because I know how to do it. If say I don't know how to do it, I'm at the first time, if I don't make sense. Yeah. I know how to do it. So I just need people to listen. Just calm down and listen. He knows how to do it. I understand the cliche of people saying, uh, you know Nigeria tried to put you in a box. Yes, yes. I, yes. I don't want to be in that box. Yes. Because I feel like 
I want to do Hollywood standards. Yep. I want yep. to give you Nas Boy as an actor, <laughs> a perfect actor, a skit maker, and a musician. Yeah, that's how I want it. Nobody you go tell me what I want. Okay. <laughs> and you go, you know, now you go, now me, now me go decide. Facts. Understand? So at the end of the day, I know that in a normal thing, people will complain, people but after will cry a while, here and there, but after a while, they, they'll get used to I've it. I've seen a lot of people do it now. Absolutely. It's just that we don't pay attention to these things. Files actually got awarded as an actor. Absolutely. Awarded as an actor. Absolutely. Uh, got awards being a musician. Yep. Right, so why not? Some of the greatest, uh, Eddie Murphy. Mm-hmm. Was a I don't want to go far. Yeah, like it's well, a normal thing in Hollywood. Yeah, but in yeah. Nigeria, Ey has done it. Ey is a stand-up comedian. Ey has done movies. Absolutely successful. Exactly. Successful. So I can do it. Now with your music, what what type of music would you say you make? Uh, and you know, what, what, how would you describe your music? And I've said I'm still testing waters. Yeah, but I'm still testing waters because there's no body of work yet. Yeah. Yeah, but I have my style. It's the normal Afrobeat style, yeah. But then I am not going to put out anything now with my mouth. So mm. I'm still testing what that's, that's, that's exactly why I don't have a body of work yet. But I'm working on something. To find out where yeah, exactly. you sit comfortably. Exactly. And you mentioned the fact that you're a Yoruba boy that grew up in, in, in Port Harcourt. Mm. What, what, what part of Nigeria are you from? What's your state? What? I am from Oshun State. Wow. Precisely, yeah. In Nisa, Udo, it's in local government area. No way. Do you go home? I've yeah. gone home twice, though. <laughs> just twice. <laughs> I swear. So family is based in Port Harcourt. Yeah, you know my mom is not Yoruba. Mm. My mom is from Wari. Wow. Yeah, exactly. So, so you have Yoruba and Wafi blood, and you are cool like this. <laughs> 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 no, that's amazing, man. But one of the reasons why I asked that question is with the recent political situation in Nigeria. Mm. You know, it seemed like people tried to make it tribalistic. Yeah. You know, people went behind travel lines. What does that feel like for someone like yourself who is mixed race? You no, know, so that's that's one of the reasons why I don't see tribalism. Hmm. I don't see it because I was raised in between tribes. I, I was I was I was in Port Harcourt. I didn't have anybody bully me because I was a Yoruba boy. Hmm. Understand? My mom is worried. My dad is Yoruba. So you see that I've been through Nigeria. <laughs> so Tribalism is shit to me. Because I feel like we they complain about racism. Whereas we never deal with and finish for our own country. Facts. You understand? So it's just really shameful when I see Facts. people talk about tribalism. To me, Facts. I always I said it recently and some people were still bashing me and I wonder why. I said I am not Yoruba, I am Nigerian. Absolutely. And guess what? People were still saying you are foolish. No, 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 no. <laughs> on social media, there's come some on, crazy come on. people. It is not I'm not saying, saying I'm not a Yoruba boy. Just I'm just telling you that I am more Nigerian than a Yoruba boy. Absolutely. You understand? And you so have it's a Nigeria right first. It's Nigeria first. Facts. You understand? So, for you, waiting, say, tribalism mean anything. I always tell people, say, if you go hospital, the person will go do your surgery, will go take care of you, Phoebe, you, you man. Are you going to ask Phoebe, Yoruba you man. You understand? <laughs> the, the people will be your customers. Yes. Actually, people from different tribes, your best customers, Phoebe, no, won't Phoebe be your tribe person. Facts. You understand? Different things, you they travel, the help that you get from people, a lot of people, no be, my best friend is actually from Port Harcourt, River State, precisely. Wow. You're not no be Yoruba person. You understand? So I've met nicer persons Facts. from different tribes. Facts. Facts. So it's not, I have no reasons to be tribal, tribalistic. I have no reasons. I agree with you, and that makes absolute sense. Finally, um, we've seen you with the success of your content creations and your comedy skits and stuff. Now you've put music out. What is 2023 going to be like? What should we expect from Nas Boy? I'm still going to create skits. Of course, of course, of course. That's bread and butter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Very <laughs> good. <laughs> Let's not go and dull it. I'm still going to make videos because yeah. it makes me happy and it makes yes, people happy. Absolutely. So yeah, I love to do it. But then I want to be happy. So I want to put down music. Great music, great songs, actually. So I already recorded a lot of songs yeah. already. And one is going to be coming out pretty soon in May. There's going to be a guest appearance on it. But, but let's not talk about let's it. Let's keep it quiet for now. <laughs> so yeah, so it's music. Um, it's more music, actually. More music. More That's music. brilliant. More Listen, music. Um, like you said, your content makes us happy. Um, people like myself are so happy to see individual young men and women that have started to become superstars and most importantly putting bread on the table mm. from the talents that God has given them. It makes it, it, it gives us so much joy. We saw what Afrobeat has done. Mm. Now we're seeing what your industry is doing and we can't say nothing else but thank you and congratulations on the success so far and we wish you 
the best going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, my superstar guest, Nas, boy! Energy God in the building. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure.